When we first started looking at the capital asset pricing model, we made a number of key assumptions. So these include that investors are rational and risk averse. And they're not symmetrical in the way that they take risk, which we looked at in risk return and diversification. We assume in the capital asset pricing model that all of the specific risk has been diversified away, so we're only left with systematic risk. We also assume that capital markets are in equilibrium, so that our expected returns on portfolios should sit on the capital market line or the SML, the security market line, and that investors and the markets have perfect information. We also made an assumption that investors can buy and sell with ease, with no restrictions, any amount of risk-free assets or holdings in a portfolio. So therefore, there's no taxes or transaction costs that would hinder this. And finally, we assume that an investor can borrow and lend at the risk-free rate. So some of the limitations of the CAPM are that, as with any model, the rate of return or the outputs are only as valid as the quality of the inputs. It's also very difficult to estimate beta. Should we look one year or three years or five years back tracing a particular stock with its market? You saw in order to calculate beta, we need to know the covariance between the stock and the market and the variance of the market. It only considers fully diversified portfolios, which in reality is not always the case, that we might have portfolios that are not efficient. So last year we're going to cover an extended version of the capital asset pricing model. This is called the arbitrage pricing theory. So the APT is an alternative pricing theory to CAPM that considers several factors when calculating expected return. Not only risk premium, RM minus RF, as what we saw in the capital asset pricing model formula. So this is our CAPM model, where we had return is equal to the risk-free rate plus beta, our sensitivity measure, multiplied by a factor. With arbitrage pricing theory, we have the expected return on an asset which is going to be, again, our risk-free rate plus multiple different sensitivities, B1, B2, and B3, multiplied by several different factors other than just RM minus RF, our market risk premium. So we've extended the set of measures that we look at to calculate the expected return. Using the APT, we can construct portfolios that can have sensitivities to certain factors, whether it's macroeconomic, political, geographical, for example, if we've identified the relevant factors and we have calculated precisely the sensitivities to those factors, with our understanding of the market and the economy and our exposure to our other assets, we can optimise the sensitivities of those factors and thereby continuing to optimise our relationship between return and risk and essentially protecting the portfolio against unpredictable factors. And to an extent, the APT would give us the ability to construct a new portfolio of assets with any level of sensitivity we wanted to each of the factors we've identified. So just like with the CAPM model, the arbitrage pricing theory has assumptions and limitations as well. So in assumptions for APT, we again assume that investors are rational and risk averse. We assume that markets are efficient, that they incorporate information perfectly, that there's no transaction costs to permit arbitrage, which means that we can't earn profits from mispriced securities. The factors that we've identified in the APT model are uncorrelated to each other, Otherwise, this will yield erroneous results in the model. The APT model itself does not specify the relevant factors to use, so we have to identify those. As we mentioned in the CAPM, it's not easy to calculate an accurate beta, so we'd need to calculate the beta or sensitivity measure to each different factor in the APT. Lastly, when we discussed constructing a portfolio where we can select the sensitivities we'd like to different factors, it may be difficult to construct a pure factor portfolio. So let's recap on everything we've covered in the capital asset pricing model. So we first started with what is the objective of portfolio management? It's to maximise expected return for a given level of risk. We then looked at a model that will allow us to generate an expected return for a risky asset based on a level of systematic risk. We've looked in detail at what beta is as a measure of sensitivity of an asset to a change in the market. It's also the proportion of our investment that we have in a stock relative to the market. How do we calculate beta and how do we interpret it? Next, we looked at the arbitrage pricing theory as an extended version of the CAPM, which takes into account several factors instead of only the risk premium in calculating expected return. And we identified that the CAPM and the APT models of expected return 
incorporate a number of assumptions and limitations.